I'm reading to you from the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James Version, commonly so called. Please, get your authorized version of the scriptures. And please follow me along in the scriptures that we will be looking at today. Follow me along, word for word, verse by verse, at what we are going to be looking at and discussing today. Be a Berean. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Don't be a Christian that just sits there and gets a shot of religiosity in the arm and then goes about their way uh, knowing nothing of what God hath said. Be a Berean. Be a Berean. And check me out. Check me out. Make sure I'm telling you the truth. Check me out. Make sure I'm not lying to you. Check me out. Make sure I'm not skipping a groove. Don't sit there passively. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Okay? I'm going to begin with a little of what uh, I read this morning, today. Psalm 144, verses 1 on to verse 4. What does it mean to be righteous? What is righteousness? What does it mean to be righteous? Psalm 144, verses 1 on to verse 4. You know, a lot of people, a lot of these Christians out there, um, they, they're looking for all kinds of milk. Milk is good, but milk also causes a lot of uh, other issues. The dairy, you know, <laughs> it can. Um, this is not milk. This is not a milk video, okay? Just so you know. Psalm 144, verses 1 on to verse 4. Blessed be the Lord my strength, which teacheth my hands to war and my fingers to fight. That doesn't really mean that you can go ahead and twist that to mean that the Lord strengthens your hands to write all kinds of wicked comments on people's videos. Okay. Or to play keyboard warrior. In context, what he is talking about is actual physical war. Okay, and we are at war. We're in a spiritual war, and the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God, casting down imaginations and pulling down strongholds. My goodness and my fortress. My high tower and my deliverer, my shield. Now look at that, okay? Look at verse 1. Okay, look at verse 1. Blessed be the Lord, my strength. The Lord is my strength and shield. He is my strength and song, okay? The Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ. He is our everything, okay? Blessed be the Lord, my strength, which teacheth my hands to war. And my fingers to fight. My goodness and my fortress, my high tower and my deliverer, my shield, and he in whom I trust, who subdueth my people under me. Note the number of how he says of the Lord six times, the number of man. Okay? The number of man. That's what six symbolizes. The number of man. That's why a lot of people get confused with um, the time of Jacob's trouble, I believe. Because they want to attribute the time of Jacob's trouble as the, um, as the sixth dispensation. I do not attribute it to that. I attribute the sixth dispensation to the kingdom of heaven. Because God as man is going to be ruling and reigning on earth for a thousand years. Okay? Never mind that. We talk about that in several uh, different videos, which will be in this uh, in the description box. Okay? Lord, what is man that thou takest knowledge of him? 
or the Son of Man, that thou makest account of him. Man is like to vanity. His days are as a shadow that passeth away. Blessed be the Lord my strength, my goodness, my fortress, my high tower, my deliverer, my shield, six the number of man. Proverbs, just one, just a couple of one verse uh, references here. Proverbs chapter 14, just one verse, verse 12. Proverbs 14, verse 12. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. And of course, Proverbs, well, you wouldn't know the, of course, but Proverbs 21. Verse 2, every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord pondereth the hearts. What does it mean to be righteous? What is righteousness? According to Scripture. Now, we're not going to focus today on the singular word right, okay? Uh, the very first appearance of the word right in its singular form appears in Genesis chapter 13, verse 9, okay? And that's in reference to right-handedness, okay? And also what? Right, like you're going to give it right to be Catholic for a day, right? Yeah. Uh, right could be meaning correct or an entitlement due by grace. Okay, we're not going to focus on that. We're not going to focus on that. We are going to primarily focus, and we're, we're only going to look at a few uh, references, but these references that we are going to look at is going to give us what it means to be righteous, okay, and righteousness, okay? We're going to utilize what is referred to often as the law of first mention. Now, the law of first mention does not appear written in scripture as worded as such, but its principle is tested, tried, and is a sure foundation. Is a sure foundation. <laughs> Beg your pardon. Beg your pardon. Beg your pardon for that. Beg your pardon. <laughs> you know, Monday the Lord gave me some of the best sleep I've ever had for quite some time. And yesterday, the 18th and early into this morning, I thought I was going to die. No joke. No joke. But the law of first mention is tested and tried. Okay? That tells us usually, usually, when you wanted to find a word when pertaining to Scripture, utilize first mention. How, when does the word first appear? What context is the word that you're looking at appear in? Okay, use first the scripture to define a scriptural word. Okay, I recommend Webster's 1828 Dictionary. I recommend it. I use it. But you know what? When it comes to words in scripture, I use Webster's as a last resort, not as the first option. Utilizing the law of first mention. Okay, and follow that along with the appearances of the word to come about what it means, okay? Searching scripture, uh, comparing scripture with scripture in other ways, okay? But Genesis chapter 7, verse 1, the very first appearance of righteous, okay? Uh, the word righteous appears before the word right. Very interesting. But Genesis chapter 7, verse 1. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark, for thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. So there's the very first appearance of uh, 
righteous. Very first appearance. Okay? Now what do we see from this very first appearance? And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark, for thee have I, don't look at me, I have I seen, for thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. Okay? And Noah, which I believe his name means rest or peace, he shall give rest unto our souls, something like that. I believe that's what Noah means. But, um, so right away we see that righteousness is something that the Lord sees. True righteousness comes from the Lord. And why did the Lord say this of Noah? Look in Genesis chapter 6 now, beginning at verse 5, on to verse 14. The days of Noah. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Question! Has that changed today? Have we evolved as a race of man, the human race? Human. Human. I found in scripture. But have we evolved as the human race and become far better? No. We've gotten worse. The sins that mankind is doing today and allowing would have made the people of the actual time of Noah, of the days of Noah here that is uh, w that we're looking at, what the people are doing today would have made the people in Noah's time blush before the flood. Absolutely. Absolutely. But, and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. Hello. And that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart it was only evil continually. And what is truly good? What is truly evil? We cannot know. The only way we can know what is truly good and what is truly evil is being saved, born again, converted, having the Lord living within you. And searching the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. This is what tells us what is good and what is evil. And the Lord, you see, you, you got to have the Lord within you to guide you into all truth. Okay? And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth. And it grieved him at his heart. So a lot of wicked people say, whoa, God had to repent. Was God a sinner? No. And it grieved him at his heart. It repented the Lord. He changed his mind. He turned. It's like, oh, he was regretful. It grieved him at his heart. You look at that verse. Look at the verse. Okay. Grieved. Repented. Grieved. Repented. Okay. True repentance, which is turning today. Repentance is turning away from your self-righteousness. Okay. That's grievous. It's. Repentance is a grief. It grieves. Okay? The Lord was sorry that he made man upon the earth. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping things and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. Okay? Now, come on. With this context, verse 6 and 7, you wicked people out there who are like, God needed to repent and see a sinner, uh, only you will willfully try to twist that. That proves you evil. Okay? Most people who have half a brain in their head with that context will figure out, okay, repent, repenteth there is not saying that God was a sinner. No, he was turning. He was changing. He was regretful. It grieved him that he had made man. Okay. Verse 8. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. But Noah found grace. Grace is unmerited favor bestowed upon the lesser, the greater bestowing favor upon the lesser. 
Okay, that's that's a good definition of grace. You want a good scriptural definition of grace? One second. And you want a, a good uh, scriptural definition of what grace is? Probably the best one you are going to find. Uh, very quickly, hold your place there in Genesis. Uh, Exodus chapter 33. Exodus chapter 33, verse 19. And he said, the Lord, I will make all my goodness pass before thee. And I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and who and will shew mercy on whom I will shew mercy. God's grace. God's grace is something that is given. See, a lot of Christianity tells you that if you just believe, then God is obligated to reward you with his grace. No, no, God isn't obligated. You were, you were here at the very beginning of the video, right? God is not obligated to give us anything, okay? He isn't. He knoweth the hearts. It is an issue of the heart. It really is, okay? All right, but let's continue. Verse 8 in uh, Genesis chapter six, 6. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord, unmerited favor, of all the people, of all of them, during this time, in uh, the time of Noah, out of all of them, he's found only one that have found grace in his eyes. Only one. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations and Noah walked with God. Now, was Noah sinlessly perfect? Absolutely not. Perfect in his heart. Okay? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay? And Noah begat three sons. Shem. Yes, the Asiatics. Ham. Uh, those of, um, of the African region and stuff. Okay? And Japheth. The Europeans, okay? The earth also was corrupt before him, and the earth was filled with violence. <clears throat> and God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. All flesh! Except for one. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord says here that Noah was what? Noah was a just man in verse 9 and perfect in his generations and Noah walked with God. Okay? Okay? Now verse 13. Verse 13. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Room shalt thou make in the ark, and shall pitch it within and without with pitch. Okay? So, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah, as given here in Scripture, was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God. Okay, sounds similar to Job, who had one of the best testimonies you can ever have from the Lord himself. A uh, just man and right, who uh, a perfect and just man, one who fears God and escheweth evil. That's what the Lord said of Job. But see here, he says something very similar of Noah. Okay, Noah. Was Noah a descendant of Job? I believe so. I believe so. I believe Job was before the flood, myself personally. Absolutely. Okay? But, so, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And what? And Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God. Okay? And then the Lord said to him, Make thee an ark of gopher wood. And, and look at verse 22. Thus did Noah according to all that God commanded him. 
See, the dispensation of the patriarchs was similar, is similar to the dispensation we have today. It is similar, not identical. Because God was going to destroy the earth. Noah found grace in the eyes of God. Noah was what? Ju a just man and perfect in his generations and walked with God. Okay? And God told him to build an ark. And thus did Noah according to all that God commanded him, so did he. So see, there was an element of doing something within that dispensation of the patriarchs. Okay? Oh, don't worry. We're going to uh, address what Paul talks about. Okay? See, you got to rightly divide the word of truth, my friend. You got to rightly divide the word of truth. Okay? Noah was commanded to build an ark. And he did. And he did. Abraham was commanded, get thee out. And he did. See, the faith that they were having in what is what God was going to do. The law was not given yet. The law was written upon men's hearts. Yes, but it was not written in stone yet. Okay? All right? So, with the law written in men's hearts, yes. Okay? There was an element of doing something. Obedience. Obedience. Okay? Doing what God said. All right? Now, now go to 2 Peter. 2 Peter chapter 2. 2 Peter chapter 2. 2 Peter chapter 2. We want verses, just two verses. 4 and 5. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, his three sons, Noah himself, and their wives. Okay? A preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly, a preacher of righteousness. Because... Noah was perfect, was just and perfect, and he walked with God. Hence, because he did that, and he obeyed, he did what God said for him to do. He was a preacher of righteousness. And that righteousness, as we have seen in Genesis chapter 7, verse 1, Okay, hold your place here. Uh, no, you don't need to hold your place there. Well, yeah, hold your place there. Go back to Genesis chapter 7, comparing Scripture with Scripture. Uh, Genesis chapter 7, verse 1. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark. For thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. Why did the Lord see him as righteous? you got to remember, during this dispensation, the Holy Ghost was not given. Okay? as a permanent resident in anybody, okay? Okay, there was no seal until the day of redemption in this dispensation, okay? It was God's grace, his choosing and imputing, imparting, okay? Okay, but it was predicated upon an obedience. Thus did Noah, according to verse 22 in chapter 6, Thus did Noah according to all that God commanded him, so did he. Noah, in uh, Genesis chapter 6, verse 9, Noah was a just man and perfect in his generation, and Noah walked with God, and he did what God said. And hence, Peter gives the example of Noah, uh, and spare, verse 5 in 2 Peter chapter 2, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness. And how did Noah accrue to that righteousness? Genesis chapter 7 verse 1. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come, thou and all thy house into the ark. For thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. So righteousness is what comes from who? God comes from God. 
And he knows what is right. He knows what is good. He knows what is evil. Only he does. Okay? He is the only one who can declare who is righteous. Who what? Who are just and perfect in his generations and walked with God. How do we have that today? By his grace through our faith. Okay? Now, on this, now go to Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24, verses 36 on to verse 39. So right away we see that the declaration of someone who is de deemed righteous comes from who? Comes from God. Okay? Comes from God. All right? And we are declared righteous today in this dispensation by the blood of Jesus Christ. Because we go to him on his terms. Okay? It is the height of self-righteousness, by the way, with these free grace, easy believers and devils. Okay? You save yourself by your own belief. Your own righteousness. But Matthew chapter 24 Verses 36 on to verse 39. And we can go in many directions with that. Oh, you've seen the Lord Jesus Christ. He appeared to you personally. Your righteousness? Yo, you, you must be a special one. Because the Lord appeared to you personally. You see where you see how dangerous it is to, to try to establish righteousness? Apart from God? Mm. Matthew chapter 24, verses 36 on to verse 39. Matthew chapter 24 is talking about how it's going to be during the time of Jacob's trouble. The time of Jacob's trouble. Jacob. Who is Jacob? Israel. Okay? Matthew 24, the church of the living God, the body of Christ, is not on the earth. You Christians, sure, you'll be there. But those of us who are truly saved, born again, converted of the church of God, church of the living God, we get redeemed, caught up before this time period. Okay? This has nothing to do doctrinally for us today. Nothing. Instruction and in righteousness, absolutely. Doctrinally, it has nothing to do with us. But, Matthew chapter 24. So during this time, the church of the living God, he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. That's talking about the body of Christ, the church of the living God. God is omnipresent, omnipotent. He ain't going anywhere. But his representatives, his body is going to be taken up, taken out of the way. Okay, he's going to have the two witnesses and the 144,000 during the time of Jacob's trouble. The 144,000 are the only ones who are sealed during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay, all right. Watch out for people who say that the church of the living God, the body of Christ, does not be redeemed. That's heresy to speak against the redemption of the purchased possession. That's Catholic, by the way. Okay, but... But of that, uh, Matthew 24, verses 36 on to verse 39. But of that day and hour, knoweth no man, day and hour when the Lord is going to come back at his second coming with us who get redeemed. Okay? No, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noe were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. A lot of people like to liken us as today on uh, the days of Noah. Instruction and in righteousness, the days of Lot, you know, before uh, God destroyed uh, Sodom and Gomorrah and that kind of stuff. Uh, are we? Are we in the? Are we in the days of Noah? No. No, we are not. No, we are not. Okay, why? Because the church of the living God, the body of Christ, is still on earth today. Okay? 
he will not deny himself. He will not pour his wrath upon his own body, the church of the living God. So the days of Noah, Noe, are actually applicable in this context unto the time of Jacob's trouble. Instruction and righteousness? Are, are we seeing people like they were in the days of Noah? Absolutely. Absolutely we are. But this reference is in reference to how it's going to be during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? So, in, actua in actuality, when our Lord says, but as, it, as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Okay? For as in the day, and for as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noe entered into the ark. Okay? And because of the mark of the beast, and because of that man of sin, the son of perdition, who's going forth conquering and to conquer, and through peace shall destroy many. He's going to bring in, uh, he's going to bring about a false sense of prosperity saying peace peace when there is no peace okay all the while going forth conquering and to conquer destroying the uh dear sons of ishmael who have a chance to get saved today okay the days of Noah that are being refer referred to here are not for us today not for us today uh Instruction and righteousness wise, yes, yes. But see, at this time, in Matthew chapter 24, his body, the church of the living God, is not there. Oh, there are going to be a lot of you Christians out there. And you know what? You know what? I would not be surprised if that man of sin, the son of perdition, were to refer to his followers as Christians. Okay, but let's continue. Verse 39. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. See, verse 39 tells us right there that the days of Noah that are referenced here in Matthew chapter 24 is referenced to how it's going to be during the time of Jacob's trouble because the coming of the Son of Man be his second coming with us who get redeemed. See? But the days of Noah. And what we see here, the days of Noe, okay? What were they doing? They were eating, drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage. Flippant. Not concerned with God's righteousness. What God deemed as righteous. No. Let us eat, drink, for tomorrow we will die. And remember... God's righteousness is something that he imputes onto us, okay? Don't worry, we're going to be getting to the law. Don't worry about that, okay? So now let's go to Genesis chapter 15, okay? The first appearance of the word righteousness, okay? Genesis chapter 15, okay? First appearance of righteous was in context of Noah, who was perfect, who was just and perfect, who walked with God and obeyed him. Okay? All right? Different dispensation. Okay? That was the difference between the dispensation. Today, in this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, you come to the Lord on his terms, broken, contrite, and in fear of him, you call upon his name, and he saves you. You're sealed until the day of redemption. Your obedience after they're with you can disobey the Lord as long as you want, but you're going to pay a heavy price for that disobedience. It's not going to affect your salvation. And see, that's where the easy believism devil comes in. Okay. Okay. But see, under the dispensation of the patriarchs, obedience was a requirement. Okay. We have to obey the Lord today in coming to him on his terms. Yes. Yes. You can't boot the door out of the way and climb up some other way. Okay? Because what happens? You're going your way, not his way. 
and his way is righteous. The way of the cross, which leads to what? Death unto yourself. Genesis chapter 15, verses 1 on to verse 6. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram. I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed. And lo, one born in my house is mine heir. And behold, the word of the Lord, and behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. That's the promise. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven and tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be shall be, not present tense, okay, not present tense. In this dispensation, the time of the patriarchs, the faith was in what God was going to do for them. Noah was commanded to build an ark. In faith, Noah acted on that, okay, all right? Abram was told what? Abram was told what? Get thee out! Okay, and he acted on that. Okay, all right. They both found grace. Noah was declared righteous by God himself. Okay, for what? Being uh, just, perfect in his generation, and walking with God. And when God told him to do something, he did it. Okay? So, Again, the faith during the time of the patriarchs in what God was going to do. Verse 6. And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. He counted it to him. For righteousness. And we talk about this. Um, there will be links in the description box about Abraham's seed, okay, where we talk in great detail about this. And also, James chapter 2, uh, the fruit of not rightly dividing. People want to say that James chapter 2 is applicable doctrinally for us today. It is not, okay. Uh, those will be in the description box for you to look at. But let's now go to Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. Okay. Rightly dividing the word of truth, my friend. You have to rightly divide the word of truth. The scriptures are written for you. It's not all written to you. Okay? A majority of the New Testament is written to you today. A majority of it. Not all of it. Hebrews and James specifically, and also the book of Revelation. It's there for us, okay? It's there for us. All things that were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Romans chapter 15, verse 4, okay? But you got to rightly divide the word of truth. Rightly dividing uh, links will be in the description box, Okay? But Romans chapter 4, verses 16 on to verse 22. Romans chapter 4. Therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Okay? As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations, but for him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth make alive the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Who against hope believed in hope. He believed what God said he was going to do, he was going to do. Okay? 
that he might be the father of many nations. According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And not being weak, and being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead, when he was about a hundred years old. Neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able to perform and what he was going to do. Okay? Paul's describing this. But look at this. And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Why? Because he put everything he had in the promises of God. He put everything he had in what God had said to him. Okay? And that, because he put everything upon the Lord. Everything! And see, it was in what God was going to do. Today, it is finished. It is finished. Okay? It is finished. The death, burial, and resurrection. The blood shed on the cross. It is finished. And see, this is why he is using him as an example. Okay? This is why he is using him as an example. Okay? Because that faith that Abraham had in what God was going to do, we today are to have this type of faith in what God has done. God died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And he shed his blood on the cross to make an atonement for your sin and for mine. That's what our faith is in. That's why he is using Abraham as the example of the faith that he had. Okay? And like I said, people like to say the, uh, confuse what Paul is saying with what James is saying as if what James is writing about in James chapter 2 is applicable doctrinally for today. It isn't. Remember, during the time of Jacob's trouble, they are, those are they who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Okay? It's faith and works during the time of Jacob's trouble. Today, you don't keep the law to be saved. You don't keep the law to be right with God. Okay? Okay? Now go to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. See, you have to rightly divide the word of truth. Okay? In this dispensation, we are saved by his grace through our faith. Okay? We have to come to him on his terms. Broken of our self-righteousness. Okay? Broken of his of our self-righteousness. We go to the cross, which is a death. Okay? Alright? You don't just all of a sudden say, Well, I believe now, therefore I am saved. Skipping over brokenness being broken of your self-righteousness. These easy believers and devils are some of the most self-righteous prigs I've ever seen. Because they are declaring their own righteousness. Because I'm saved because I just believe. Hebrews chapter 11, verses 6 on to verse 10. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Now, see, you got to remember, Hebrews, the book of Hebrews, is written for the Jewish people during the time of Jacob's trouble. And see, where Paul was using Abraham as an example of the faith and what God was going to do in that dispensation of the patriarchs, we are to have that same kind of faith in the finished work of the cross. Okay? That's why Paul uses Abraham as that example. Okay? And then Paul talks about uh, the works that Abraham did, that he didn't have anything to boast before God. But yet James talks about how uh, Abraham was justified by works. Why? Because you've got to rightly divide the word of truth. During the time of Jacob's trouble, it's faith and works. 
Today, in this dispensation, you don't keep the law to be saved, to get saved, to stay right with God. It doesn't work that way. You got to rightly divide the word of truth. And you got these wicked, scoundrel, devil heretics who say, you got to keep the commandments. Got to keep the commandments. You got to keep the law today. You couldn't do that if you tried. And they disguise that law as whether it's they're trying to keep the scriptural law or a man-made law, like from Catholicism. Okay? But Hebrews chapter 11, okay, well, let's continue. Verse 7. By faith, Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by which, by the which he condemned the world and became the heir of the righteousness which is by faith. See, this is describing the type of faith that was in that dispensation of the patriarchs. It was what? What? Being warned of God of things not seen as yet. The flood coming. Okay? The flood coming. Well, we don't know when the redemption of the purchase possession is going to happen, Brad. You're right. But see, Christ died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Okay? And he shed his blood on that cross to atone for your sins. Okay? That's what we have faith upon. We have faith on our Lord Jesus Christ, what he did for us on the cross, on him. And we come to him broken of ourselves. You can't go to the Lord thinking that you're some special one, that you're a chosen one because you're black or white or just because you're a Hebrew that that gives you an automatic end today. It doesn't work that way. You can't go to the Lord in your pride thinking, I'm some great one. It doesn't work that way. Verse 8. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for inheritance, obeyed. And he went out, not knowing whither he went. Okay? <laughs> By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Okay? So, righteousness. What is righteousness? Something that is imparted by God, but also doing as God says. Okay? All right? Now, that's not today, that's not about your salvation. You come to the Lord on his terms, broken of your self-righteousness, Having contrition, taking responsibility and accountability for your own actions, for you putting them on the cross and nailing those nails in his hands, his feet, and putting the crown of thorns on his head. It's your fault, as it was, as it is my fault. Okay? And in fear of him, you call upon his name, and he saves you. You're sealed unto the day of redemption. Okay? Okay? You're going to go to heaven. But see, as a saved man or woman, to obey the word of God as ambassadors for Christ, for us today in this dispensation, to do what the scripture says, because we are ambassadors unto Christ, unto the lost. You live as the lost, you, you, and you're saved, and you live as the lost world lives. God's going to be ashamed of you. Yeah, you'll be in heaven. Yes, you will. Yes, you will, which is, uh, yeah, far better than being in hell. Absolutely. But God's going to be ashamed of you for all of eternity, my dear friend. Okay? Now, skipping down to verses 16 and 19 in Hebrews chapter 11. But now they desire a better country. 
that is, and heavenly. Wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. Okay? By faith, Uh, by faith, uh, excuse me, of whom it was said, wait a second, yeah. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, excuse me, and he that had received the promise offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Verse 19, accounting that God was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. See, during the time of Jacob's trouble, Okay, unlike during under the law, where you were accounted righteous for doing what God said according to the law, okay, and your faith it was in God would deem you righteous for doing it His way as prescribed in the law, okay. But see, during the time of Jacob's trouble, it's going to revert back similarly because number one, the law is going to be present, okay. Revelation was it chapter 12. Uh, these are those who keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus Christ, have the faith of Jesus, okay? So it's faith and works, okay? Their faith during the time of Jacob's trouble is that our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, is coming back for a second coming with us who go up with him, okay? That's what they're having faith in, that he's coming back, okay? That's why Hebrews is written in the fashion it is in, okay? All right, now go to, Deuter now go to Genesis chapter 12. Okay, Genesis chapter 12. To be righteous is something that God deems. And righteousness is doing as God says. Okay, you are declared righteous today because you came to the Lord on his terms, broken, contrite, and in fear of him you called upon his name. And he saved you, Lord willing. Hence, it's God's righteousness that is imputed unto you. Okay? Because Christ died, buried, and rose again, third day according to the scriptures. He was obedient. He went to the cross and died. Okay? He did what God said. He himself being the Father. Okay? Now go to Genesis chapter 12. We, I've, I've mentioned this. Now we've got to look at this again about Abraham. Genesis chapter 12. Verses 1 under verse 6. Uh, 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 Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 under verse 3. Again, God choosing. Okay? Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will shew thee. And I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Verse 4. So Abraham departed. He did what God said. Okay? Listen. To be saved today, you have to be broken of your self-righteousness and come to him broken of yourself. Okay? That's a requirement. So many want to skip over that and say, just believe, which leads to self-righteousness. I've encountered this so many times. You corner these free grace, easy believism devils. It's like, well, I'm saved because I just believe. So it's your belief that saves you. Your belief, not his grace. Your belief. It's a veiled type of works. Belief is not a work. It's our our, it is our answer to his grace. Yes, it is our answer to his grace. Okay, yes it is. All right, yes it is. All right, but see, the way that the free grace, easy believism heretic intuits it and defends it, it's their work that they're doing to save themselves. Okay, now go to Psalm 32. Psalm 32. Psalm 32, verses 1 and 2. 
Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile. And let's go back to Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4, and we are going to be reading verses 1 on to verse 8. What shall we say then that Abraham our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. And see, James says that what? That he was justified by works. So, wait a minute. Time out. What's going on here? you got to rightly divide the word of truth. Okay? The promise was given unto Abraham of Isaac and that he was going to receive uh, for a promise uh, the, the, the promised land, the Israel. Israel. Not the Israel that is today. The Israel that Abraham was promised was a little bit bigger. Okay? And in that, in the promises of God, in the promise, God chose Abram and promised to him for nothing that Abram did. Okay? Nothing. All right? And that is what Paul is talking about here. Okay? For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Abraham believed what God said, that he was going to give him Isaac. He didn't know what his name was at that time, but that he was going to give him Isaac, and that he was going to give him for inheritance the land of Israel. Okay? And that alone, Abraham did nothing. Okay? He believed God, Okay, and it was count, and it was counted unto uh, for what's that the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. He believed what God was going to say, and because he believed what God was said, he counted that to him for righteousness. Okay, and we had already seen that he had been called out. So he obeyed. See, that's the difference between the dispensations. Paul is talking about those promises that the Lord gave unto Abraham. For those promises given unto Abraham, Abraham didn't have to do squat. Okay? He received those promises. Today, in order to obtain God's salvation, you don't have to do any work of the law. All you have to do is come to him a broken pile of sniveling mess. Broken of yourself. And being broken of your self-righteousness is not a work, dear friend. It's a requirement. You can't go to the Lord in this attitude that I'm something special. It doesn't work that way. Okay, now let's continue. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, unmerited favor, but of debt. I did this, this, and this under the law. Henceforth, okay, because I did this, Lord, I, am I righteous now because I have done what you said? See? But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly... God called Abram out. Abram, Abram obeyed. But see, God in God's calling of Abram, there was nothing that Abram did. God chose. And see, this is where the Calvinists and these wicked black Hebrew Israelite people come in saying that we're chosen ones. And see, that's a veiled form of Calvinism, elect and non-elect. Yes, God chose Abraham. But see, God's choosing for today, God chose, this is East, God chose the way of the cross. 
and Jew or Gentile, you go the way God chose, the way of the cross, and you go on his terms, broken, contrite, and in fear of him, call upon his name, and he saves you, you're sealed. This is not that difficult. This is not that difficult. God's choosing. God's choosing. God chose Noah. God chose Abraham. God chose Moses. God chose to give the law. God chose the cross. Okay? God's choosing. God's choosing. And see, in here is where the Calvinist and all its variations of elect and non-elect come in. I want to tell you today that you're elect or non-elect. You have no choice, right? Right? The choice is the way of the cross. Are you going to go that way broken? Or are you going to boot the door and say, I just believe. Booting the door and the door is Jesus Christ and going up some other way. Or are you going to boot the door and say, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Jesus is the Lord. So that makes you saved? Booting the door out of the way? Just uttering words without any repentance or uh, without any brokenness or contrition? Without any fear? No, no, no. No, no. Okay? Continuing in Romans chapter 4. Even as... Verse 6, even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works. Yes. 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 Ultimately, what is righteous is something that God imputes. Okay? Righteousness is something that God imputes, gives. Okay, the works of righteousness, doing what God has prescribed for us today in this dispensation, walking according to the scriptures. Yes, but ultimately, to be righteous is what God imparts, what he says. Okay, and today, it's not our righteousness. We walk according to the scriptures. Hence, we walk righteous. Called to be saints. Okay? Let's continue here. Let's continue. Uh, I just lost my place. Okay. Saying, blessed are they, verse 7, whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. 8. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Will not impute sin. Now go to Deuteronomy chapter 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 23 on to verse 25. Under the dispensation of the law, faith and works. The law was written, established. Law, God chose the way of the law. And you were it was your righteousness if you kept the law. Deuteronomy 6, verses 23 on to verse 25. And he brought us out from thence that he might bring us in to give us the land which he swore unto our fathers. Brought the children of Israel out of Egypt to bring them into the promised land. Okay? And the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes to fear the Lord our God for our good always that he might preserve us alive as it is, as it is at this day. And it shall be, don't look at me, look at the scripture. Our righteousness, if, get your pen, circle that if, if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God, as he hath commanded us. Okay? Oh, 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 oh. Daniel chapter 7, or Daniel chapter 9, okay? But hold on. Right there. Don't look at me. Look at the scripture. Look at verse 25. And it shall be our righteousness. Under the law, you could say to people, well, I, I did this, 
I did this, I don't covet, I don't steal, I don't commit adultery. Okay? It was your righteousness. Your righteousness because you did what God said according to the law. And in you doing what God said according to the law, your faith was in God that he would deem you righteous for doing as he said according to the law. But see, it was your righteousness. Okay? Your righteousness for doing what God said. And the faith was that you would be deemed righteous in the sight of God for doing what God said. Different dispensation. And you also got to remember, during the law, hey, ask the charismatics. The Holy Ghost could come and go, come and go, come and go. There was no permanent seal until the day of redemption. Okay? Got to rightly divide the word of truth, my friend. Okay? But what happened? See, the law, dear friend, we're going to talk about this. The law, dear friend, are the perfect requirements of God. But you know, unless your name is Mark the Messenger, of course, unless, you know, you try to keep the law perfectly, you, you're going to figure out real quick, fast like and in a hurry, that you can't do it. The law was God's perfect requirements. To be right with him. But guess what? You can't do it. And on that, Daniel chapter 9. Daniel chapter 9. Daniel chapter 9, verses 7 on to verse 11. One of the most godly of prayers you're ever going to read in Scripture. You know, you ought to take some time yourself personally and study glean the prayer of Daniel. Absolutely beautiful. Who prays like this? Daniel chapter 9, verses 7 on to verse 11. O Lord, righteousness belongeth unto thee. Noah and Abram, Abraham, were righteous because the Lord chose them. They obeyed, did what he said, okay? But see, when it comes to Abraham, okay, the promises that God gave to Abraham, Abraham didn't do anything to attain those promises. God chose Abraham. He called Abraham out of Shem to establish the Hebraic line, okay? Those promises that God gave to Abraham, Abraham didn't do, have to do anything for those promises, Okay? And he believed what God said, and that was accounted to him for righteousness, okay? And of course, Abraham was obedient, because under the dispensation of the patriarchs, obedience was, was a requirement, okay? Today, to be saved, you have to be broken. So that's a requirement. You have to have contrition. You have to be afraid of the one whom you're going to stand before, either at the judgment seat or the great white throne, who, who can throw you into hell. You have to be afraid of him. Okay? And if he saves you, you're sealed. You're not going to be held at gunpoint to walk according to the scriptures. You've got to make the right choices. But Daniel, chapter 9. Verses 7 on to verse 11. O Lord, righteousness belongeth unto thee, but unto us confusion of faces, as at this day to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and unto all Israel that are near and that are far off, through all the countries whither thou hast driven them, because of their trespass, that they have trespassed against thee. O Lord, to us belongeth confusion of face. Why? Because they rejected the commandments of the Lord and walked after the heathen. Walked after the imaginations of their own hearts. Yeah. O Lord, to us belongeth confusion of faces, of face, to our kings, to our princes, and to our fathers, because we have sinned against thee. To the Lord our God belong mercies and forgiveness, though we have rebelled against him. 
Neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in his laws, which he set before us by his servants the prophet, prophets. Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law, even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us, and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned against him. Okay? Because we have sinned against him. The law was the perfect requirements of the Lord. Perfect. Okay? We do not keep the law today to be saved and stay saved. Okay? Go to Galatians chapter 3. We've gone over this in several videos, but we have to go over it again. <laughs> Last night, some fool who was offended by that Mark the Messenger video that the Lord had me to do. And he left a comment on the previous video and I deleted it and blocked him. Guy's an idiot. Void of logic and reason. Okay? And what did he do? He mentioned about something about, you know, Mark the Messenger and that you're a coward and something like that. Whatever. Um, you know, when it comes to that video, Mark the Messenger... I looked. The average watch time on that video is only nine minutes on the Mark the Messenger video. Nine minutes. And then you got these deceived people who want to say, don't judge and quote Matthew chapter 7 to me. With only watching, you're not even going to get a, a crumb in the first nine minutes of that video. <laughs> and then they say, don't judge. People are not searching the scriptures. The time has come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Their friends. You know? But, Galatians chapter 3, 19 on to verse 25. Close, uh, not to close the chapter. Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions, till the seed, our Lord Jesus Christ, should come to whom the promise was made. And it was ordained by an angel in the hand of a mediator. Now, a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one, spirit, soul, and body. Is the law there then against the promises of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. Mm. Now see, this is not a contradiction. Okay, The law was a continual thing. The sacrifices that you had to do. Okay, It was continual. All right, we're going to look at this, okay? That's what it was. The law was there to, to give you life, to keep you away from those sins, from those things that God hates, okay? But you live any time in this skin suit, you realize that you can't do that perfectly. You might be able to hold, uphold one, but you can't uphold all, Okay? But the scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should, be, should afterwards be revealed. You're lost. You are under the law. Because the law is what? There to convict you. More on that in a minute. Wherefore, the law is our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith through his grace. Okay. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. What does that mean? You do not have to keep the law, the Ten Commandments, and the ordinances found within the dispensation of the law. You don't have to do those things 
to be saved, to be right with God, or to stay right with God. Okay? That's what that means. Now, go to Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7. People are not uh, enduring sound doctrine. People are not enduring sound doctrine today. Romans chapter 7, verses 6 on to verse 13. But now we are delivered from the law, that being dead wherein we that being dead wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. Oldness of the letter is talking about the law. It's not talking about the scriptures. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay. I had not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust, except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. Comprende? Let's continue. But sin, taking occasion by the commandment, wrought in me all manner of concupiscence, wicked lust. For without the law, sin was dead. Until you got uh, someone of the Church of the Living God telling you you shouldn't do that, it's not a sin. What, what are you talking about? Ignorance is bliss, right? See, the law was there to show you what sin is. God's perfect requirement. And in him there is no sin. Okay? Let's continue. For I was alive without the law once. Sure! I, I, did, I lived this world. I did everything I wanted to without knowledge because I didn't know. But see, it's going to come a time when you are going to know. For I was alive without the law once, but when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. But what do you mean? I, God says it's a sin to covet? What, what, what do you mean? God, God says it's a sin for me to have a girlfriend on the side while I got my wife or to have a boyfriend on the side while I have my husband? What, what, what do you mean? It, it's, it's a sin to worship a marionette statue or a Christ mastery. What do you mean it's a sin? And the commandment which was ordained unto, which was ordained to life to keep you away from that which God hates. I found to be unto death. Why? Because it kills you to realize that you can't do it. You can't do it. You can't keep the law perfectly. And under the law, there was continual sacrifice to be made. Listen, friend, do you not understand? If you are trying to keep the law today to be saved, you're saying that Jesus Christ is accursed, that his death, burial, and resurrection wasn't enough for you. Your faith is in what you're doing. His death, burial, and resurrection, the blood shed wasn't enough for you. Do you realize that? Verse 11. For sin, taking occasion by the commandment, deceived me, and by it slew me. Wherefore the law is holy, amen, and the commandment holy, and just, and good. It's perfect. The law is perfect. But see, it was ordained unto life to keep, you, to keep you alive from doing those things that God hates. But I found it to be unto death because it killed you that I can't do it. Unless, of course, you're Mark the Messenger and all his deceived disciples. You poor sots. Poor old sot. Verse 13. Was then that which is good made death unto me? The law? God forbid. Don't look at me. But sin. The law is not death made death unto him. Uh, made death unto him. The law good? No. The law is good. He just said. The 
It's holy. The command, the law is holy. The commandment is holy and just and good. Just what God chose. But see, its purpose was to show you of how inept you are. And see, this plays right in too with these easy believism heretics. You are doing something to save yourself. It's your righteousness because. <laughs> Question an easy believism heretic. They'll dance around it at first, but you keep pressing them, it's going to come out. It's their righteousness because they believe. Every time. And there are some of them out there, some of these easy believism, free grace heretics, or friends with devils, who, man, what are you doing? If only, if only you would wash your hands of that filth. But nonetheless. Was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid. But sin. That it might appear sin. Working, working death in me by that which is good. I can't, I can't do this. I, I, every day, I, I, I covet this. I, 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 I lust after that. Uh, I mean, uh, you think upon a maid in your heart. You lust after her beauty in your heart. You've committed adultery. Okay? I, I spend too much time on the hell phone. Uh, it's a, oh, yeah, that's right. This isn't a statue, so this isn't an idol. Uh, you know? That sin by the commandment might become exceeding sinful. And Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9. I was talking to my best friend last night. Or yesterday, excuse me. And uh, we brought this up. And seeing in that the watch time of that Mark the Messenger video. is only nine minutes. And it's like, dude, people are at the most watching only nine minutes of that video, not getting into the entire thing. And that all the comments, I blocked the comments on that because the, the, nine minutes? And you're going to ignorantly, willfully, ignorantly put, don't judge? He was chapter nine. Verses 11 on to verse 14. You say don't judge to justify your sin. Every single time. He who answereth the matter before he heareth it, it is folly and shame unto you. You're not going to hear the whole thing. Like, you know, watch the whole video. Okay? If those who oppose us give their entire time to watch a two-hour video... Why aren't you? Uh, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 11 on to verse 14. But Christ being come and high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of bull, of blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Uh, those of you who are trying to keep the law today to be saved, why aren't you sacrificing animals? Oh, and you black Hebrew Israelites, how come you're not over there in Jerusalem? Hmm? Huh? You're the true Hebrews. <laughs> Yeah. Why aren't you over there? Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in, in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh... How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal capitalist spirit 
offered himself without spot to God. He never sinned. Purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. And Hebrews chapter 10, verses 1 under verse 4. For the law having a shadow of good things to come, of good things to come, and not the very image of those things, can never with those sacrifices, which they offered year by year continually, make the covers thereon too perfect. See, it was a continual thing. The Roman Catholic Mass is a continual thing. Uh, you know, they're sacrificing their Christ, the cookie, every day. And he did it, he died once. Continually. For then would they not have ceased to be offered? Because that the worshippers once purged should have no more conscience of sin. Of sins, excuse me. But what happens? You get some some self-righteous prig coming along. You gotta keep the commandments. You gotta keep the commandments. Sear, searing your conscience with a hot iron. Speaking unto you smooth things. Teaching contrary to the doctrines that are for today in this dispensation. And that work of the law is a continual work of where you are keeping the law. Therefore, it's your righteousness. Most easy believism heretics adhere to once saved, always saved. What happens if you stop believing? What happens? Hey, what happens if you stop believing? Well, someone truly saved won't. I've known of people who have gone through some pretty hard times and start to doubt the Lord because of what he has allowed. Okay? Does that mean they're not, not saved? Not necessarily. Absolute suffering reveals and absolute suffering reveals absolutely. But in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. It only covered them. That's why they had to continually do them. The blood of Jesus Christ, God our Father, washes them away. Okay? Now, when talking about this thing of righteousness, especially for today, we cannot avoid but to go to Romans chapter 3. The easy believism heretic's favorite place to go. But they omit something. They omit something. Romans chapter 3, verses 19 on to verse 28. Now we know that what's the thing... Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law. You're lost, you're under the law. That doesn't mean you can keep the law to stay saved. You're going to be judged by that law. Okay? You've, have you lied? Have you stolen? Have you coveted? Have you committed adultery? Well, I haven't done that. I haven't done that. But you've done one of the other things. You're guilty. Okay? Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. Okay, you haven't lied, but you've looked on a woman with lust. Okay? You haven't looked on a woman with lust, but you sure do covet, don't you? You don't covet! But you worship an idol, whether it's a statue, a tree, or an image on television, or a hell phone, or whatever. Yeah. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now... The right in this dispensation, in this dispensation, but now, today, in this dispensation, 
the righteousness of God without the law is manifest, being witnessed by the law and the prophets uh, in the Old Testament. Okay, gives testimony of what it's going to be today. Okay, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. So see, the easy believers and heretics come to this and say, just believe. Just believe. But see, they're skipping over something. And they say to you, prayer is a work. Calling on the name of the Lord is a work. That's what they say. And they come to this and they say, just believe. And they come to hear. This is uh, his, the inquisitor from New York. This is the pure gospel according to him. Omitting something very important. We're doing the same chapter, by the way. But let's continue, okay? For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And see, the umbrella term, well, we're all sinners. We're all sinners. But what about you personally? Well, we're, I'm, yeah. We're all sinners, so they hide themselves under the umbrella. The umbrella term. That we're all sinners. We are all sinners. Amen, absolutely. Amen. But see, going straight to here and omitting brokenness and contrition. And just coming right to this, making so many false converts... And I've seen the fruit of easy believism and I've talked with some of these easy believism devils every single time. They'll, they'll shadow box with you. They'll rope and dope for a little while. But sooner or later, they're going to get tired and it's going to come down to I'm saved because I believe. Your self-righteousness. You're righteous because you believe. Not by his grace through your faith. Every single time, boy. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. It is finished. The blood that he shed on the cross cleanses away your sin. Absolutely. It's not a continual thing. Absolutely. We don't have need to be afraid to use and read Romans chapter 3 because some devils have corrupted it. Okay? All right? There's a place for it. All right? Let's continue. To declare His righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say at this time, His righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus and see it sounds so tempting to say well just believe just believe but see they're omitting something very important you go to someone who hasn't been broken of their self-righteousness it's like well yeah I don't I'm not the best person but I'm better than this guy and these easy believers and devils you, you corner these people with scripture. It's like, well, I'm, yeah, I'm a sinner, but I'm not as bad as this guy. And that's not how it is for us at the Church of the Living God. Where is boasting then? Like I said, with these easy believers and devils, the Catholics, the work salvationists, those who keep the law. It's always, I'm saved because I believe. I went to Mass. I keep the law. I'm elect. I, 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 I. I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. Just like your father, Lucifer. Where's the thou, O Lord? Where is boasting then? It is excluded by what law? Of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Deeds of the law. The Old Testament law, the law of Moses. 
Okay, you don't have to keep the law today to be saved. And see, the easy believism heretic comes to this. This is describing. Okay, this is a description. This is giving you the answer. Okay, yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. But see, what is before this? That is what the easy believism heretic omits. And what they omit is the most important thing. Now, let's read Romans chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 18. What advantage then hath the Jew? What profit is there of circumcision? Much every way, chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. The law was given unto the Hebraic people who were descended out of Shem, not of Ham, nor of Japheth. Okay? You dear Hamite, the law was not given unto you. Hi, you Japhethite, the law was not given unto you. All of you of Shem, the law was not given unto all of you of Shem, but whom God called out of Shem through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Those are the ones unto whom the law was given. Okay? The color of your skin does not give you a pass unto God, dear friend. Whether you be black or white, or brown, or green, or yellow, or red, or chartreuse. It doesn't matter. This is the only color that our Lord really sees. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without faith of God without effect? God forbid. Yea, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings and might overcome when thou art judged. But if our unrighteousness, doing contrary to what God has said, commend the righteousness of God, what shall we say? Is God unrighteous to take vengeance? I speak as a man. So, hey, if I sin and grace abound, Right? If you get to see God's grace and glory through my living as a devil, what see, what does Paul say? I speak as a man. That wisdom is earthly, sensual, devilish, derives from man, flesh. Okay? God forbid. For then how shall God judge the world? For if the truth of God hath more abounded through my lie unto his glory... Why yet am I also judged as a sinner? And not rather, as we be slanderously reported, and as some affirm that we say, let us do evil that good may come, whose damnation is just? That's part of the Noahide law thing. Do as much evil and devilment that you might bring about the Mashiach. Yeah. What then? Are we better than they? No. In no wise, for we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin. As it is written, and this, see, this is what the easy believism heretic omits. This is what they omit. And this is what is so important. They jump over repentance and contrition. And go straight to belief, making many false converts. As it is written, there is none righteous. No, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. That includes you. Well, you say, well, we have all sinned. Yes, but see what the easy believism devil omits. Personal accountability and responsibility. 
hide yourself under the umbrella we're all sinners and just believe. The easy believism devil omits brokenness. Omits contrition, godly sorrow. I like to confuse you and say it's actually worldly sorrow. Worldly sorrow leads to death. Okay? Godly sorrow leadeth to repentance that will not be repented of. Okay? They're all gone out of the, the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. My mother couldn't get past that. She went to hell because she couldn't. What do you mean there's no one good? I do this. I do that. So you're the, you're the measure of your goodness. You are the measure of your own righteousness when we have already seen and proven that God is the measure of righteousness. He declares things that are right. Okay? Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. And that is what the easy believism heretic omits. But see, also now, go to Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. We want verses 17 on to verse 22. Mark chapter 10, verses 17 on to verse 22. Who is good? Who is good? See, as we have already seen, under the law, it was your righteousness because you did what God said. You went his way to him. And because you went his way to him, he saw you righteous for keeping the law. Hence, it was your righteousness because you did what he said according to the law. Today in this dispensation, you go that way to the cross, broken, contrite, and in fear of him, call upon his name and he saves you. You are deemed righteous because you came to him on his terms by his grace through faith. Okay? But let's look at Mark chapter 10, verses 17 on to verse 22. Okay? Before the death, burial, and resurrection, still under the law. And when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good master, what? shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? What must I do to inherit eternal life? And he said, good master. He didn't know that he was speaking to the Mashiach, God manifest in the flesh. Okay? The son of David, king of the Jews. He only saw a meal ticket, someone who could give him good advice. He didn't see God. Why? Because what, what shall I do I, 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 me, me, me. He was still the center of everything. And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. And see, this rich young ruler didn't see God before him, just, just a prophet. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not kill, commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Defraud not, honor thy father and mother. Look at this. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these have I observed from my youth. Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him, and said unto him, loved him, told him the truth. One thing thou lackest, and it just happened to be the most important thing. Go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come, take up the cross, and follow me. Get rid of everything that you have that's in place of where I ought to be, and come, follow me. And this rich young ruler, his righteousness, what shall I do? I have observed all these things. I've done what you said. I've done the, the law. I'm righteous. What, 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 what must I do? But see, 
The law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. And what happened was people were putting their focus more so on the law rather than the one who would justify you for you keeping the law. Oh, yeah. Hence, they made the law an idol. That's happening today with the Catholics, with these uh, people who say you got to keep the law today to be saved. They're making an idol of the law. When all the while, not focusing. You kept the law because your eyes were focused on the one who would sanctify you, who would deem you righteous for doing what he said according to the law. And that's what the Lord Jesus uh, addressed there. And, and what is this? Verse 22, and he, and he was sad at that saying and went away grieved, for he had great possessions. He saw only this. He only saw good master, not God. And the law had become a stumbling block unto him because he was doing the law in and of itself, not having his eye focused on the one who would be the sanctifier for keeping the law. Does that make sense to you? Does that make sense to you? And you also got to remember this, James chapter 2, one verse, verse 10. And this, this you throw at every single one of these guys who say you got to keep the law today. And every time, say this, James chapter 2, one verse, verse 10. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. And if they have the chutzpah to say, well, I keep the law perfectly. You lie and your breath stink. Then they are saying that they are God themselves because only God manifests in the flesh. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. He was the only one who could keep the law perfectly without ever breaking one precept of it. And then you got these guys who say, well, I keep the law perfectly. Get away from such a person like that. But see, they're keeping the law. It's a continual thing. It's their righteousness. See? Proverbs 24. Proverbs 24. People, you need to recognize of just how deadly and dangerous it is, dangerous it is for, for you to fall in line with these people who say you got to keep the commandments today. There are commandments that we keep today. Yes. Yes. Because we are ambassadors for Christ. Okay. More on that in a minute. Okay. But the law of Moses. You couldn't keep it at your try. If you break one, you break it all. Proverbs 24. Verses 7 on to verse 9. Wisdom is too high for a fool. Fear of the Lord. A fool who says in his heart there is no God. He openeth not his mouth in the gate. He that deviseth to do evil shall be called a mischievous person. The thought of foolishness is sin. Foolishness. Behaving, living, acting as if you say in, there, in your heart, there is no God. So the thought of foolishness is sin. Thoughts can be sin. And you're going to tell me you keep the law today. The thought of foolishness is sin and a scorner. And the scorner is an abomination to men. And of course, Luke chapter 18. And here, oh boy. Oh boy, Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18, verses 9 on to verse 14. And this is with the, the people who keep the law, whether it's, you know, the trying to keep the scriptural law, the law of the Catholic, elect or non-elect. You save yourself because you believe. You save yourself because you can say a few words. All omitting repentance, true repentance and contrition. I can do better because I keep the law. I can do better because I just believe. I can do better because I can say something. God is not everything to you. Luke chapter 18, verses 9 on to verse 14. And he spake a parable, this parable 
under certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Like I said, these easy believers and devils, the Catholics too, well, I went to Mass. I've had communion. I, I do penance. I go to confession. And if you die, you know you're going to heaven. That's the sin of presumption because you're working to be saved. And, hey, even if you're an elect, right, uh, with some of these guys, um, you're not guaranteed to go to heaven unless you keep the law, right? Even though you're elect. Yeah. Two men went up into the temple to pray. The one a Pharisee. A Pharisee is one that puts tradition above the word of God. The one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed with thus with himself. And this is the self-righteousness of those who keep the law, these Calvinists, and these easy believers and devils. Okay, this is right here. The Pharisee, oh, and let me add in there, the ones who have seen the Lord personally. Your humility is fake. Because when pressed, you'll throw in the face, well, I've seen God. I keep the law. I just believe. I can utter Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Jesus is the Lord. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week. Fasting, part of the law. I give tithes of all that I possess, tithing for a temple under the law. And the publican, standing afar off, would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. And under the law, that's what happened with a lot of these people. These who keep the law, who, um, who were keeping the law in today, you know. Uh, Isaiah chapter 65 Isaiah chapter 65, verses 1 on to verse 7. I am sought of them that ask not for me. I am found of them that sought me not. I said, Behold me, behold me unto a nation that was not called by my name. I have spread out my hands all the day unto a rebellious people, which walked in a way that was not good after their own thoughts. Full well. You make the commandment of God of none effect with your tradition. A people that provoketh me to anger continually to my face, that sacrificeth in gardens and burneth incense upon altars of bricks, which remain among the graves and lodge in the monuments, which eat swine's flesh, and broth of abominable things in their vessels, which say, Stand by thyself, come not near to me, for I am holier than thou. These are a smoke in my nose and a fire that burneth all the day. Behold, it is written before me. I will not keep silence, but will recompense with an S, that's a verb, even recompense into their bosom. Your iniquities and the iniquities of your fathers together, said the Lord, which have burnt incense upon the mountains and blasphemed me upon the hills. Therefore will I measure their former work into their bosom. Go back to Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7. Verses 14 on to verse 25. Righteousness. To be righteous has everything to do with our Lord. 
He is the one that declares us righteous. By what he has prescribed within that dispensation. Okay? Noah was uh, found righteous in the eyes of God because he uh, was perfect and walked with God. Okay? He did justly, was perfect, and walked with God. Not sinlessly perfect, but he walked with God. His heart belonged to God. Okay? Abraham was righteous. Okay? Because God chose him out of Shem. Okay? God chose Abraham, but Abraham also did what God said. Okay? Under the law. God chose the law. You did what was under the law that was your righteousness, and because you did that, the Lord would say, okay, you're righteous because you've done what I have said. Okay? Righteous has nothing to do with us. Do you get that now? What does it mean to be righteous? What does it mean to be righteous? To be of the Lord Jesus Christ. To be saved. It's his righteousness, not your own. And if you're keeping the law, or just believing, or uttering some words, elect or not elect, why were you elected? Because, well, you must be something special, right? It's your righteousness. Or you've seen the Lord. It's your righteousness. Romans chapter 7, verses 14 on to verse 25. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. He's talking about sin, breaking the law. He couldn't keep the law. He wanted to be sinless, sin free. But he realized that he couldn't. And the law showed him that he couldn't. He wanted to keep the law, but he couldn't. And that he broke the law, he hated it. But he wanted to keep it perfectly. But he, he, he saw that he couldn't. And this is Paul, the greatest of the church of the living God. If I then do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Yes, if I do, if I sin, yeah, the law is good because the law tells me it's sin. Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth within me. Okay? He's not disassociating from his sin. He's owning it. That we are sinful. Okay? Sin is here in the flesh. Okay? For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. The flesh profiteth nothing. The flesh profiteth nothing. Okay? For the good that I would, I do not. Not sinning. Keeping the law. He couldn't keep the law. Because if you offend in one, you've broken it all. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find in the law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. When you look at the law, you're going to look at the law of Moses, you know, the Ten Commandments. I broke that. I broke that today. I broke that yesterday. I broke that a few minutes ago. doesn't matter. And if you're this type who says, looks at the Ten Commandments, oh, I haven't done that, I haven't done that, you're in a lot of trouble. Your pride is rife, is overflowing in you. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. Look at the Ten Commandments. I, I, I've done that, I've done that, I do that. I think that, I act like that, I do this. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members, flesh, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. The law of sin. What is the law of sin? Um, uh, uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 3. 
For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh. Huh. And for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. Okay? Now, but I see in another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. And when you see the inevitability that you can't keep the law, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. That doesn't mean that he gives his body over to do sin, God forbid. No, but what he is saying is, okay, I know what the law says, but I also got to under, I understand that no matter what I do, I can't keep the law. You do your best, sure, but you can't keep it. You can't. You're going to break it. It's impossible. And Isaiah chapter 64, Isaiah chapter 64, okay? Isaiah chapter 64, verses 4 and verse 7. For since the beginning of the world, men have not, men have not heard, nor perceived by the ear, neither have seen, neither have, hath the eye seen, excuse me, O God, beside thee, what he hath prepared for him that waiteth for him. Waiteth for him. God is first and primost. Thou meetest him that rejoiceth and worketh righteousness. This is under the law. Worketh righteousness. Working of the law. Okay? Those that remember thee in thy ways. See, they were keeping the law and sake of keeping the law that they may declare themselves righteous. But see, you are supposed to keep the law because that is what God said in that dispensation. And in you doing what he said, you had your eye focused on the one who would declare you righteous for doing what he said. Behold, thou art wroth, for we have sinned. And for we have sinned. And those in is continuance, and we shall be saved in continuance. But we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. That's a reference onto a menstrual cloth. Is this saying that the law is a... No, 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 no. We've already established... But see what would happen. What would happen? Okay. These people went about to establish their own righteousness and adding things to the law that weren't there. Their own traditions. And we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. And there is none that calleth upon thy name, that stirreth up himself to take hold of thee, for thou hast hid thy face from us, and hast consumed us because of our iniquities. And also, Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. you got to remember, too, during the time which of, of the Pharisees and Sadducees, um, they had their own traditions intermingled with the actual scriptural law. Philippians 3, one verse to start, verse 3. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. See, there it is. You're keeping the law today, you, you're, you have confidence in your flesh. You're saved because you just believe you're having confidence in your flesh. You're saved because you can utter some things. You have confidence in your flesh. You're saved because you're elect or non-elect. 
we're saved. We who are saved of the church of the living God, we have no confidence in this. And the enemies of our Lord have nothing but confidence in this. And skipping to verses 7 on to verse 9, because Paul describes his righteousness of the law. Okay? He describes it. But verses 7 on to verse 9. But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ, and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. One verse. One verse. For he hath made him, verse 21, for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Made by who? By us doing something? No. By his grace. Through our faith. Those often who speak of righteousness, I don't think they know what it truly means. You keep using that word. I don't think it means what you think it means. Righteousness has everything to do with our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, that what he gives you in this dispensation. Your righteousness, it was your righteousness under the law. We've already uh, uh, explained all of this. You're keeping the law today? Save yourself because your belief or you utter something? You don't get it. and made the righteousness of God. Remember, Paul was made all things to all men that he might save some. Not that he's saving them, but he went to where the Lord sent him to. Okay? Let's close this up with Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 under verse 10. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh saints. We're called to be saints. You're saved, born again, converted, have the Lord within you. You're a saint. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor adjusting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this ye know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and Truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. Romans chapter 12, proving, Romans chapter 12, as ambassadors for Christ, having the ministry of reconciliation and word of reconciliation. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. 
And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. As witnesses unto our Lord, unto his righteousness. And see, the problem is so many out there are walking in their own righteousness. A lot of these King James Bible-believing Christians, they're walking in their own righteousness. And you can tell because the way they defend themselves. And they say, well, Paul, Paul, you know, said, well, you compelled me. Yeah, compelled him after a constant barrage. Righteousness today has nothing to do with you. And if it does, then it's yours and it's not of the Lord. Today you are righteous if the Lord deems you righteous because you've come to him broken, contrite, and in fear of him you call upon his name. It's his righteousness, not yours. And your reasonable service, having his righteousness, his salvation, is to prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God by walking according to the scriptures with all meekness and lowliness and humbleness of mind, not thinking that you are some great one. You understand? I hope you do. Because I think one of the main problems is we don't understand what righteousness is because we don't understand who God is. There are those, I'm not talking to you, the brethren. You understand who God is. He is either the God of all or the God of nothing. And if you are doing something to keep yourself saved or to save yourself today, then he's the God of nothing. It's either or, there is no middle ground. So, whew, that is going to be it for this video. A little bit longer, but it's okay. Thank you for watching this if you do. I hope this may help some of you to understand what it actually means to be righteous. It has everything to do with God, nothing to do with us, especially in this dispensation. And even in the dispensation of the law, okay, it was the law and you adhering yourself to the law in order to please God, not just the mere keeping of it. Like, you know, shadow boxing, going through the, the motions without doing it kind of thing, without, you know, yeah. It's going to be it for this video. I'm going to get this uploaded, Lord willing. Thank you for watching this if you do. Please keep us in your prayers. Please keep us in your prayers. Thank you for those of you who pray for us, who have been praying for me. I need it. I thought I was going to die earlier this morning. Don't know. Love you. See you in the next video.